Hi, I'm Tony Kidd, and I want to show you how to install the Kidd trigger job kit for the Ruger 1022. Um, first, I'll show you the components that the kit comes with. It comes with a tool steel hammer, sear, disconnector. Uh, there's a new disconnector spring in there, and also a new uh, trigger, CNC machine trigger. I also have new trigger pin and hammer pin. The trigger comes with an over travel screw which is nice, a nice adjustment. So let me show you how this installs into a Ruger. This is a Ruger polymer trigger guard which has uh, kid components in it and we sell this as a as a unit but it's it, it um, disassembles and assembles exactly as your Ruger will. So for all intentional purposes, you know, it's, it's exactly the same. You'll be able to follow this right along with your Ruger. The first thing you want to do is release the hammer and remove the hammer strut assembly. We'll set that aside. And next, we'll go ahead and just remove the whole magazine catch assembly. Push this pin out. We'll remove the magazine release, remove the magazine catch, and come back up to the top, push out this pin, which will release the bolt hold open spring. Now let me move these components out of the way. The next thing we want to do is remove the hammer. We just poke that pin out and the hammer will lift up and it comes out with the bolt hold open spring. Those work together uh, as in a little assembly. We we'll set that aside and now you have your trigger disconnector and sear assembly inside. There is a spring inside uh, that operates those so when you take that apart just put your hand over the top of it poke the pin out and all of this will fall out. Don't be worried. I'll show you exactly how it all goes together. It's very simple. Nothing's going to launch across the room. We'll remove the trigger return spring and now we have an empty trigger guard. So if you wanted to put your Ruger back together you'd simply put your disconnector back in with its pin in this shape. Take your sear, put your sear spring spring in the hole. That spring also connects with the hole in the disconnector. You just rotate them around as such and then you would put a, a slave pin in there, an eighth inch diameter by half inch long. We'll go around till it, it lines up and catches. Usually goes a little bit easier than that, but there we go, that's good it's done. So you could put this back in or you can take your kit which in this case they're identical and install it. So I'll show you how you begin. You have an empty trigger guard. You take your kid trigger job kit, little trigger assembly, drop it in and now you put in the, the trigger return spring. It goes in a little hole back here and that returns your your trigger each time. Now this plunger can be installed. Uh, the spring has an open end and the spring has a closed end. You can put it in either direction, it'll work fine, but the open end lets your plunger fall off and it, it falls apart. If you put the closed end, remember to put the closed end on the tenon and it will stay together as, as one unit and it makes it much easier to put together and, and take apart. So let's put that in. Let me slide this guy back in there. Get in there. Now that it comes around, you'll compress that spring and you want to line up your slave pin with your pin hole. Take your new, newly supplied trigger pin and slide that through. Should be able to get that alignment pretty easy. If you don't, just look again, get it lined up, poke it through shoots the slave pin right out the other side. Now everything's working perfectly. Disconnects, reconnects, everything's good. 
So once you've got that, we'll go back to the mag catch with spring, put that in, push that in. We'll take our mag release, stick that in, take our mag release pin and poke that through, lining that up. Now our mag release is working fine and you can see the relationship between the two, the mag release head and the slot in the mag catch. Now we want to put our bolt hold open in, so we need to open up that slot. We'll just push that pin very slightly, enough to open that slot. And now we can drop this in, excuse me, drop this in that slot. Line the pin up, push it through, and now the bolt hold opens installed. The hammer is next. We need to take the, the bolt hold open spring with the dog leg and put that on the right side of the hammer over the boss. We'll pick up on the bolt hold open and slide it up underneath. Now when we do that, we want to make sure that the safety's off, that the red ring is showing so that we can get a little bit of extra movement out of that trigger down there. We're going to be pivoting it. So we take the tapered end of the hammer pin poke it through, it's lined, and now the hammer is captured. Our next step would be to pivot this dog leg on the bolt hold open spring into the notch of the bolt hold open. Pivot that spring around and capture it underneath. That way now we have the proper pressure to work our bolt hold open. Magazine works. Everything is installed, everything is assembled except now for the hammer strut assembly. The strut assembly has a, a notch in the keeper on the back and we want that to be facing upward. So let's grab our hammer with our trigger, pull the trigger, pivot it forward, and now we stick the keeper down in its hole, push down on it, get it in the slot, and cock the hammer. Now what we're doing there is we're, we're actually putting this strut into that radius and that's where it pivots and operates the hammer. Now we have the, the whole assembly is put together, operating correctly, disconnects, reconnects, everything's good. So the next step would be to check to make sure that your safety is working correctly. Now when you pull the the, you put the safety on and you pull the trigger, put your finger up here to capture the hammer just in case it were to release. It shouldn't and uh, it should be a perfect fit. You shouldn't need any adjustment. But pull your trigger and make sure that there is no movement and that it doesn't fire. Safety's on and off, the, the, the trigger, the safety, everything's working correctly. Now if it did have some movement, whether it released the hammer or not, you'll need to make an adjustment. Now, the sear of the kit has an adjustment screw exactly for that purpose. When, when the uh, assembly is in the fire position, it lets the, the sear pivot downward into the notch of the, the safety and release the hammer. And then as you slide the safety over, it blocks and fills that, that void. So now the sear can't move. But if there is, for some reason, a few thousands, a very minute amount of movement there, you may not be able to uh, safely secure the hammer and the sear. And that's just due to different variations of trigger guards, whether it's a Ruger or it's a, another aftermarket. You know, we've, we've got that built in um, to, to correct that. So all you need is a 16th hex wrench. And you can see, put your safety on. And you can actually stick that wrench right in the sear, right off the, the, through the top of the, the trigger guard. And what you'll want to do is turn that in very small increments until you feel the, the safety start to drag. Always do it with the safety on, because if you don't and you push on that with a wrench, it'll fire the hammer. So just put the safety on and then make your adjustment. Now what I've got here, the safety is, is dragging. Here, let me overdo it just a little bit just to uh, give you a better example. Now see, the safety is engaging. 
and the hammer, you know, is secure. But what, what the problem we have is that when the safety engages, it's actually wedging, and see, I can force it to go farther. It's going in, it's wedging against the, the sear, and now I'm pushing it in. And it's going to work, but you don't want it to wedge. You don't want it to be that tight. You want to back that screw out a little bit so that when you put the safety on, the safety goes completely on, but you have no wedging effect. Like right there it goes in, but I can still push it about a 32nd of an inch. So I'm gonna back it up a little bit more, about a 32nd of a turn probably is about what it is, until I can put the safety on, and when I put the safety on, it's fully seated. It goes completely in. There's absolutely no movement whatsoever of the trigger and sear, and now I've got the perfect safety adjustment. As much engagement as I can get with uh, um, great function. The next thing we're gonna wanna do now that we have this all lined out and the trigger is going to work just perfectly, we'll want to adjust that over travel screw. Now, I'll put a piece of paper over here so we can see that. And uh, what you have to, to kind of get an idea of how much over travel there is, you can release the hammer again. Take the safety out, release the hammer. And at that point, you can see the gap between the screw and the trigger guard. And that's your over travel. You're going to want to turn that screw till you no longer hit the the uh, trigger guard now this one's set pretty close already has very little movement so i'm not going to adjust it any farther you don't want to screw it in till it touches you always want to leave some daylight between the two when it's in the fired position don't screw it in when it's in the cocked position because then you won't be able to fire so when it's in the fired position the hammer's in the fired position there Leave a little bit of daylight there so that you'll have something to, uh, you know, you'll have a little built-in tolerance. You can put the safety on. If I put the 50 thousandths hex wrench in there, turn it counterclockwise, you'll see the gap a little more. And now when it's in the fire position, I don't know if you can see, but you can see how much, you know, you have that extra travel, which doesn't hurt anything. But... Some people like to take that out of there as much as possible. You always want to have a little bit. I'm going to turn it back about to where it was. Check it out. Yeah, and I have a little bit of daylight there, so that's, that's properly adjusted over travel. Now it breaks. You have very little extra movement of your muscle movement in your hand once the shot breaks. And this is a one and three quarter pound trigger. It feels really good. Breaks really clean really consistent and I think you'll uh, you'll enjoy it so anyway again here's the trigger kit little trigger assembly with a sear disconnector and trigger you have a hammer hammer pin and trigger pin and I appreciate you watching the video I hope it all makes sense and uh, thanks for watching